In this video, we're going to talk about the downfall of former UFC fighter James Vick. James Vick was a 6'3 lightweight who started boxing in high school but adapted to more of a kickboxing style entering his MMA career, on top of being a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. As of 2018, he was 9-1 in the UFC. This was right before the infamous Justin Gaethje fight. Going into that fight, many wondered if James had what it took to compete against the elite in the lightweight division. Having wins over names like Ramsey Nitchum, Abril Trajillo, and Francisco Trinaldo are nice to have on a resume, but they're not amongst the elite names such as Habib Nurmagomedov, Dustin Poirier, Tony Ferguson, and of course Justin Gaethje. Looking back at his loss against Benil Dariush, it appeared to me that Vic did not have a good chin. Now, if you're a fan of combat sports, then you know that certain fighters have the ability to take a shot and some do not. James Vick appeared to be one of these fighters, in my opinion. Leading into the Gaethje fight, Vick was on a four-fight winning streak against guys outside the top ten. In his post-fight interviews, he became a lot more vocal, making bold claims like saying, These guys don't want to fight me. I've called out Poirier, Pettis, uh, Justin Gaethje, uh, Eddie Alvarez. I've called all these guys out on social media and, and trolled them all, and they act like they don't know who I am. You know exactly who I am. When the reality is, most of them simply had more important matchups against higher rank opponents with bigger names. Part of this was just him trying to get matched up against a higher rank opponent, and who could blame him. But it also seemed like James had a huge chip on his shoulder. There were times where Vic came off as a victim and a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, claiming that the UFC wasn't promoting him properly. You know, I just wanted to say, well, fuck y'all, um, I'll be on the card, but just put me as the fucking fight pass card. I don't even give a shit anymore. You know, I am on the main card, and um, I'm fighting at home, so I'm happy to fight at home, of course. Uh, but I do think I should be the main event. It was a possibility for me to get the main event spot, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pissed about it. I'm still getting annoyed about not being promoted the right way and stuff like that, but I, I don't even care. I'm just going to keep winning fights and, and demand more money. No one's came and filmed me. I've never been on a countdown show. I've never been on, on, on I've never been featured on any show. In my opinion, uh, by the time this deal's over, I'm going to be in line for a world title. And then I'm going to I'm, I'm going to demand a crazy amount of money at that point. Kiesa, Kevin Lee don't want to fight me. You know, Kiesa, man, I mean, these dudes, we're, first of all, where's the dignity of a man? Fuck these guys. They've lost their chance. I'm not thinking to, uh, uh, Kevin Lee and Kiesa anymore. They're fight, they, they're, they're, that ship is motherfucking sell for them. They, they ain't getting an opportunity anymore. I'm thinking Khabib. I'm thinking Tony Ferguson. I'm thinking McGregor. I'm thinking world title fights. When in reality, they have somewhere around 500 fighters on the roster, and Vic hadn't really done anything for them to promote more so than the average fighter on their roster. Being 9-1 and one is good and all, but again, he hadn't beaten anyone in the top 10 in the one fight he had against a top 10 opponent he lost. There are fighters who are undefeated in the UFC or even undefeated in their MMA careers altogether who don't even get the extra promotion until they beat a top opponent. Let's remember that James had also never headlined a card at this point. That was until he stepped in to face Justin Gaethje after Ally Aquina pulled out of the fight due to injury. James Vick was finally going to get his main event. To be where he's at, I think he's doing a good job because, honestly, I don't think he's a world-class fighter. I don't. I think the guy padded his record against B-level competition in the UFC, and I think I mean, against UFC competition outside of the UFC, and now that he's came over here, he's been exposed. He's been beat. Um, uh, he's been knocked out. You know, he's a tough guy, but I have all those attributes, too. <laughs> if you think that that I can't bite down on my mouthpiece and throw leather and sit there and, and you know, tough it out, just win like that. I don't have to fight like that because I have a skill set. And he, um, I think he lacks that. <laughs> At the UFC's 25th anniversary press conference, James thought it would be his moment to shine. I know you felt disrespected for a long time and not getting the ranking you deserved. Tell me where you think this, this win, when you get it, picks, uh, puts you in the division. Yeah, um, I, I'm not going to cry over spilt milk or anything that's happened in the past. Um, uh, in my mind, I'm a future world champion, and this is one of many main events for me. And after this, I, I got a, a couple people in mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until after August 25th, and then I, I'm, I'm going to get on the mic, and I'm going to talk some shit and call some people out. This is your last main event. You're about to be uh, on a three-fight losing streak and, and, and shipping your ass back to the B League to fight tomato cans again. You padded your record against B-level competition. I'm not the Homer Simpson of, box, of MMA like you are, bro. I'm not going to take a beating, but you will get knocked the fuck out. You take, you take 10 significant strikes per minute. That's 50 shots a round. That you're, you, ain't lasting, you ain't lasting three rounds of me <laughs> taking all that beating like that. You're 29 years old and you're punch drunk and, and, and slurring when you talk. Gaethje's UFC record was 1-2 and two at the time, but he was going up against guys ranked in the top five. Guys like Michael Johnson, Eddie Alvarez, and Dustin Poirier, all of which were competitive fights. On the night of their fight, James came out extremely confident, talking to the camera during his walkout, saying, Future world champ, baby. Future world champion right here. Changed my life tonight. Well, he was right about one of those things.
During the fight, Vic knew he had to keep Gaethje away using side and teep kicks to the body, while Justin was trying to push the action and get in close. One and a half minutes into the first round, Gaethje backs Vic up against the fence throwing a left hook followed by a right, which connects right on the button of Vic, putting him out cold, which added fuel to the fire for Vic critics who claimed he could not take a punch. Going back to James having a chip on his shoulder, he viewed this loss to Gaethje as a major setback. I have three fights left on this new deal. I could win all three of these fights, and it's still going to be hard to get someone ranked above me to fight me. I'm not getting cut from the UFC. I'm not worried about that, but my, my, I said my standards are higher than that. I've shown, besides getting caught with a couple of overhands, I haven't shown a lot of vulnerability in my fights. I win these next three fights, Errol, and I still don't get a top guy to fight me. And, and I, don't, I win the next three fights. I'm 12-2 and two in the UFC and still haven't got uh, uh, beat, beaten a top 10 guy. That's unheard of. People that are ranked in the top 10, they don't want to fight people that are ranked below them anyway. And they definitely don't want to fight a six foot three white lightweight that, that, that really hasn't showed a lot of vulnerability. In his mind, he thought that the UFC wanted him to lose because he feels that the UFC didn't promote him properly. When the reality was that they treated him just like they treat most undercard fighters who are in the same spot that Vic was in. His next matchup was against Paul Felder. I do think that I'm better in pretty much every position we're going to be in. You know, I think that his only chance to win this fight is just, you know, to land a haymaker like Gaethje did. Vic seemed to be more arrogant than confident, again, leading into this fight with Felder, which ended up being pretty close and competitive, but also clear, with Paul winning two rounds to one over Vic. In his next fight, he was matched up against Dan Hooker, where he said more of the same, claiming he was all around the better fighter, Vic was coming off of two losses in a row, but still seemed very arrogant, more so than confident. The fight happens and James gets knocked out yet again, this time two and a half minutes into the first round. James had now lost three fights in a row, with two being by first round knockout. What was different with James? Was his confidence shot, or was it his chin? Was he already on the decline? Had he been exposed, or was it a little bit of all of the above? James later came to the conclusion that it was time to move up to welterweight. Perhaps cutting all the way down to 155 was draining his ability to take a punch. The UFC then matched him up with Nico Price. Going into this fight, Vic was finally humble and had said in several interviews that this was a do-or-die fight for him to not get cut by the UFC. Unfortunately for Vic, this time, he was right. Price landed an upkick, knocking Vic out in the first round yet again. Vic was now on a four-fight losing streak, with three being by way of knockout in the first round and two different weight classes. Many months had went by, and then the news hit that James Vick had been released from the UFC. Many believe this was karma smacking James in the face, but in reality, I'm sure he isn't a bad person. Just a guy who took a shot trying to sell a fight, only to have it all backfire in a major way. More than a year after his last fight, Vic fights in a promotion called XMMA, where he faces Andre Fialo. I never, I've never lost to a technical boxer like he, him before. I've only lost to some looping wide shot. I think I'm a better boxer. I definitely think my ground game is, is better. If we go to the ground, I think I finish him within two minutes. I think if I catch his neck, it's over. He has one chance, and that's just land a bomb in the first round. If not, then, then, then he's going to break. This time, Vic was TKO'd in the second round, suffering from a broken orbital and jaw. After the loss, Vic announced his retirement, saying that he did not want to give up when life got tough, but also that taking too much damage is not the way because things can be permanent. Since then, James has moved on to his new career, where he is a bouncer at a bar called the Double Deuce. One night there, as he was working the door, he noticed a man entering the bar with what appeared to be a sharp blade under the toe of his boot. James, being the brave ex-fighter that he is, approached the man and told him we're closed. It's been reported that the man then asked, what are all these people doing here? To which James said to the guy, Drinking and having a good time. Then without warning, the assailant attempts to kick James Vick in the face. But with Vick's training, he immediately caught the man's foot, breaking his ankle. You're too stupid to have a good time. 